Hi everybody. This is a project that is, um, well, it's going to be a little bit long, so I apologize in advance. I don't think this video is going to be over in 10 minutes, um, but confession time. Um, during the pandemic, I have gotten hooked with Jess on watching MasterChef Australia, of all things. Um, and one of the cool things is when they come out and plate the food at the end, they often have these pretty interesting dishes that they put out. And there's one in particular that almost looks like the outside is just hewn from um, basalt or some kind of volcanic rock. And um, then the inside's nice and smooth. And the dishes always look really cool. So I thought I might try to do my own rendition of that. I love a double walled vessel. And this one, instead of making it all in one piece, I'm gonna make it in two pieces. So this would lend itself really well to hand building if you wanted to create um, two parts on different si different shaped hump molds and then put them together. Uh, this could work really well. Um, in order to create the texture, I'm gonna use a half of a nut. I think there's a hickory nut. Um, pretty sure, came from my parents' yard. Um, I think I originally picked it up because it looked like a heart on that side. So it was really cute and sweet. But I'm gonna use the really crusty side to try to replicate the texture of volcanic rock. So here goes, I'm gonna throw um, two pieces. I've got a big piece here for my outer bowl. I've got a slightly smaller piece that's gonna be my inner bowl. Um, I'm gonna throw them both on bats so that I can use the bat to help me manipulate the form and move it um, without having to pick it up um, by hand because it's all gonna be really wet. I'm going to actually start by throwing the inner bowl and I'm planning ahead a little bit. Um, so let me go ahead and show you that. It's going to be not the final shape. It's going to be shaped more like a trumpet bell, which is going to allow it to fit down onto the rim of my textured bowl. Um, so we'll see how it goes. No promises. I kind of wanted to let you in on my design process. So I will confess I've never made this pot before. It could be a total flop, but it also could be super cool, and you'll be the first one to ever see it happen. So I'm gonna center this one up fairly narrow because I want this to come down to a narrow base. You're not gonna have, uh, have to see it. It's gonna be inside the double walled pot. So I figured there's no point in leaving a lot of clay down there. I'm not gonna be trimming it. In fact, I'll probably be cutting off parts of it with my wood knife. So nice and narrow, narrower than usual connection there to the wheel and I'm gonna open down again normally a bowl I'd leave a quarter uh, sorry a half of an inch but I'm gonna go down to a quarter of an inch because it's double walled and this part isn't gonna be trimmed or even seen so cool I'm down to the right depth there I'm gonna start a curve like I would for any bowl you can refer to the video that I did on the fluted bowl basically just making sure that I like that beginning curve before I start bringing the wall up. And because of the way I'm forming this, I'm gonna start out bringing it up pretty steep. Um, I'll flare it out later to attach it to the other pot. But I don't wanna go wide, I'm gonna go wide with my other bowl. So I'm digging in and bringing this clay somewhat out, but mostly up. Really gonna get rid of that weight down there at the bottom. All right. So that's the basic pull. I've got a big cone. It's not gonna always look like that, don't worry. It'll be good for more than just ice cream sundaes. So I'm gonna do, uh, do two different things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get rid of this extra clay at the bottom because I don't need it. I want this thing to look like it's made out of a big chunk of volcanic rock, but what's really cool when you make a double walled pot sometimes is it looks super thick and it is super thick, but that airspace in between creates um, it's not an optical illusion. Well, I guess it's partly optical, but it's partly, um, you know, you feel the, the idea that it's um, light, but it looks heavy. And I like that little um, sort of play with your senses. So 
I'm gonna take this rim, and I don't wanna fold it super, super starkly outward. I don't wanna create kind of a, um, an articulation point, but I want to flare it so that I've got some flexibility as far as how I'm gonna attach it to my outer bowl. Really bringing it out pretty wide. And then this lower part, later once I get it attached together, I can play around with how I wanna sort of reshape and restretch that. And hopefully the two will stay together and I won't pop a seam and spoil the whole idea. But that is that for that part of the project. So I think what I'd like to do is um, it's clean on the bottom. This outside edge is fine. The only thing that really matters is the inside because you're never going to see the outside. I'm going to set that aside and put another bat on there. Right? And go ahead and make my textured pot. And the textured pot can be a kind of a cool standalone project. So if this feels like too much to make two different bowls for one bowl, um, feel free to skip this part and you might be able to take something away from my stamp texture with this half of a nut. All right, so take this off on its little bat. And of course, this is a fairly fresh bat, so it's gonna pull the bat pins with it. Good to realize that before you try to set it down. Ouch. Okay, bat pins restored. New bat coming up. Oh, that's a nice worn in bat. That's not gonna be so hard to get off. So this is probably half again as much clay as the first piece. I'm gonna womp it down and go ahead and get it centered. So that one's sort of the trumpet bell shaped bowl. This one's gonna be the very much the, um, the round piece of a gourd shaped bowl. You'll see what I mean. It's maybe a weird way to describe it, but. So a little bit wider attachment. And I'm gonna open the exact same way. And I'm also, I don't plan to trim this. I want the faux stone texture to come as close to the bottom as I can. So I'm gonna check that thickness. And that's about where I'd have it for a regular bowl, but I'm gonna go a little deeper since this is a non-trimmed bowl. Before I finish pulling out, I want to just make sure that's correct. Yeah, nice quarter inch bottom. I'm gonna compress and create a little bit of a swoop. One slight difference here is this one, like many pots that I apply texture to, it's gonna have um, a fairly vertical wall. I'm gonna take it, open it like a bowl, and then pull it straight up. Um, I'll apply the texture, and then I'll stretch it into its final bowl shape. So that's like just a good general principle for things that are gonna have texture. It really brings the texture to life to get stretched out like that. So I'm really just pushing with my outside hand, I'm not digging with my inside hand, and now I'm providing a backstop with my inside hand. I want this finished pot to be taller than my trumpet pot because I want it to basically hang that other pot within it. So I need to make sure that this wall gets a little taller. I also need to leave this one a lot thicker because I'm gonna be stretching it out. So I'm gonna dig in, get a hold of some of this clay, and go ahead and pull it up. And don't be greedy and go for really thin. I'm leaving it three eighths of an inch at least so I got room to stretch it out. Okay. Feel that bottom with my hand calipers. Yeah, that feels great. Okay, I'm gonna smooth it out, get rid of all those throwing rings. This stone doesn't have throwing rings. Excellent, gonna scrape the bottom a little bit and then slice it.
I am always really generous with the amount of water I use when I throw. I don't care. Uh, it doesn't make me feel proud to use less water. It makes me feel proud to have a nice pot when I'm done. So I'll use as much as I feel like so that I'm always sliding on the clay. And that's why I've got a sponge. I'll just take the excess out. That works for me because I tend to work pretty quick. Um, you may find a different approach is true for you. If you like to um, think about it and uh, ponder the, the profile a lot and maybe do more than three pulls, um, then caring about the amount of water you use could be an important thing for you. All right, the nut. So that's the texture. And I've got to decide, do I want it to go that way as I roll it or do I want it to go this way? Um, and I think I'm going to go with kind of a more vertical pattern. So I'm going to hold it this way and I'm just going to go around the pot. This might be a section you want to fast forward through. But I'm going to roll this on there all the way around. I'm using the wheel. This is where you want to have a good foot pedal that controls your wheel pretty accurately. This would be one of those few situations where um, having a treadle wheel would be a cool thing. So now I'm doing a second line of texture. And I'm going to come up and do another line of texture. I'm not being completely haphazard about this. I want to make sure that my um, whole surface is textured. I think it'll look weird if I've got some areas that are just thrown. So I'm three rows up and I'm going to keep going. Here's the fourth row. I'm feeling the pressure of the camera being on, so I don't want us to hear and be really precise, but I think it would probably end up being a nicer pot if I um, actually took my time and did this really accurately instead of just kind of trying to do it as the wheel spins. I do have an, a hand inside, so I've got something to push against. Anytime you're stamping, it doesn't matter that you're messing up the inside shape. That's gonna get sorted out when we go to stretch this thing out. So don't be afraid to back up your, your stamping with, um, with your fingers. You get a deeper stamp and uh, just a nicer, nicer effect with the stamp if you can keep your hands behind it. I'm almost done and the nut is starting to get sticky because some clay is built up on it. Um, but I'm just going to try to get, get through it. I'm going to go all the way up to the rim here because I'm going to attach the, the trumpet shaped part of my other bowl to this rim. All right, so that whole thing looks really um, textured except for the very bottom. I'm going to come in with the, the butt end of it down here and see if I can't get the texture to run all the way to the base. I gotta look a little weird with just nothing down there. That's so much better. Okay, now's the cool part. I'm gonna come in with the rib and stretch this thing out uh, so that it can contain the trumpet shape piece that's sitting over there. So I'm gonna take the rib, and the first thing I'm gonna do is straighten out my rim. So I'm just gonna come in and stretch the rim. And if I come away slowly, all of a sudden, my rim's totally straight again. I don't have to worry about the fact that I mushed it all around with the texturing. Now I can go ahead and stretch the rest of it out. You always want to stretch your rim out first. Now I am doing a little bit of a cheat because I'm a very impatient person. I'm working on that. Maybe not. Maybe I'm too impatient to work on it. My cheat is I'm pushing at three o'clock with the edge of this rib. My pinky is forcing the wall at six o'clock outward. So I am definitely double stretching this rim out. You can totally do it with just the rib pushing at three o'clock. But if you're impatient like me, um, that extra finger sneaking over to the other wall really opens it up faster. It's definitely one of those where you need the from above view to really see my, my little secrets, but it's okay. You just have to take my word for it. All right, let's go ahead and finish blowing this thing out nice and big. 
Now I can't be too crazy here because I don't want to get it bigger than the trumpet shaped one that I've got over there. That would be really sad. Um, but I do want to go ahead and make sure that I like the curve and that the trumpet shaped piece is going to have room to hang in empty space. Otherwise, I'm not going to create that uh, dramatic, thick illusion uh, from the double walled pot. I need plenty of air trapped between the two walls. So I'm gonna really bring this out even more. And I am going to torch this significantly so that it has a little bit of integrity to hold up that other pot. Um, but I'm starting to get really what I'm after. I'm loving the texture. Um, it's definitely reminding me of, of stone. I'm not loving the profile. And the trick is I can't touch the outside or I mess up my texture. I've got to just hold my breath. Now we're talking. Yeah, that's a shape I can get behind. It's really, really full. Definitely looks like somebody took a stone and just hollowed it out. Um, the inside, it doesn't really matter. Um, normally the inside is the thing I care the most about with a bowl uh, because it's the part you're eating out of. Um, for this one, I'll care a lot once I put the second piece on. Um, but this thing is, uh, is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to take and support and just flatten this rib, rim sorry, so that I've got a good um, surface that I can score up to attach the other part of the pot. One more pass with that. Surface area is a good thing when you're making any kind of a join. And then, of course, increasing the surface area with a, a scratcher tool is also good policy. Even though both of these pieces are wet, I'm going to just take, while I've got this set up this way on the wheel, I'm going to take this multi-scratcher tool. This is marketed by Kemper. It's called a feather texture brush. You can order them. I guess it's for making feather texture on things. I call it a scratcher tool. It works great for this job. Okay, so here comes the torch. Always clean your hands before you grab your torch so you don't get a bunch of goop down in the mechanism. And whenever you're working on a plastic bat, watch where you're putting that torch. So here goes. done on the inside here, especially in this bottom section where it's likely to collapse. Remember this is going to be holding up the weight of another entire bowl and it's a shape that is not super great at holding stuff up. Luckily with an open bowl like this you can torch the inside without consuming all the oxygen inside and having your flame go out. I'm trying to keep the torch off of the rim because I want that to stay nice and juicy to make that seam nice and strong. But this lower third of the profile, I'm really blasting hard with the torch. We both have enough time in this project. We don't want it to go wrong. So let's see how much steam we've got. You can never tell unless you get something dark behind it and then you look at it and I can actually see right now a lot of steam. I don't know if you can see it against my shirt, but against my black bucket, I can see copious steam leaving the pot, which is clay getting stiffer. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of goop to this rim. All right, and let's revisit the other half of this project. So if I hadn't scratched that room, if I hadn't uh, flattened that room, this could have been a really pretty cool standalone bowl. Um, and it would have had still that feeling of being hewn from stone perhaps. Um, but uh, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make it double walled and add that extra weird element of that sort of confusion about 
looking at it and having it look heavy and not be that heavy. So let's do this. We're going to take a piece of foam and we are going to flip the first piece and we're going to hope that it stays pretty much in the shape that it is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to wire it, put the, the foam on it and flip it. The reason I'm flipping is I need to get to the underside of it so I have some place to score. So here comes the foam. It's kind of cool. A lot of times you can get away with turning things over that are really soft on foam and they don't get stuck. You do want to make sure it's completely on the foam. That just barely fits, but there we go. So that's ready to flip. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's pretty darn soft. I did wire that. Did I wire that? Maybe I didn't wire it. It's acting like I didn't wire it. <sighs> Been one of those days. I'm pretty sure I wired it. It was definitely acting like it hadn't been wired. It's still acting like it hadn't been wired. So I'm going to set this down and just force it to let go. So that has definitely caved down in, um, and I'll have to hope that that's okay. Um, I'm going to eyeball. I guess I have calipers sitting right here. I don't have to eyeball. I'm going to measure the size of my bowl. And then I'm going to come over here and kind of figure out where I need to score. And it looks like I have um, a good half an inch of extra. So I'm going to come in with this scoring tool, throw it on the floor first for good measure, and scratch around. Um, and I'm going to go all the way out to the outside because that's going to get cut away. But I'm going to get this thing scored up at least a half an inch in from the edge. And I was kind of, when I was designing this in my mind, I was debating maybe even putting the inner bowl off center relative to the outer bowl um, and just kind of letting it be even more organic looking and not necessarily perfectly symmetrical. Now, I think you could probably let all this stuff get a lot stiffer and probably have an easier time doing it, but... This is real time video instruction here. No cheating with the fast forward. Not to say that you can't fast forward. All right, so we're almost all the way around. We're scratched up. All right, and I promise I won't go another whole round. I'm just gonna catch that part again. All right, now, unless I had a crazy brain for it, this guy is not wired off, so I should be able to turn it upside down freely and not have it drop. So I did that. Um, you wanna just go for it, don't stop halfway. And I'm gonna line this thing up. Sport area to sport area. Um, and now what I want to do is give it a little tap and then just flip the whole works right side up again. Now, if I had been smart, I would have put that foam on a rigid bat so I didn't just mash everything. That was really unfortunate. But there it is. It's upright again. And it should be sealed. So that's what it looks like. It's got excess clay up there at the top. And that's going to get cut off. And I may have to kind of patch up my texture a little bit up there. Um, this definitely sort of smushed. But what I want to do before I do anything else is come over this. That inner bowl is just hanging in space inside there. But I want to come over it with a rib and just make sure that that seam is closed. And I got my wish. It's definitely really out of whack at this point. Um, partly because I sort of collapsed the rim on that foam. 
but I'm using that little bit of pressure to close the seam. And that's really important because if you can get that seam airtight, now it's double walled. It's gonna hold that pressure and let me screw around with the shape of the inside um, and hopefully make it look really, really cool. So just a little more pressure at the rim just to be sure that I've got it. I'm letting the, the rib just kind of fall into the valley of that area that I collapsed. All right, I'm going to do one of my favorite tricks now before I go any farther, which is using my wire tool, um, kind of like a flush trimming bit on a router. I'm gonna just come up against the side with it and spin that wheel slowly and just ride my finger gently against that textured bowl and just trim off a nice, flush trim. It's just like trimming your laminate to your countertop edge. And it's all smoothed in. And I can take my finger and kind of blend it a little bit. Just using a dry finger and just making sure that it's closed. All right. Definitely got my wish for some asymmetry. So as I turn it for you, you can see it's, it's pretty funky. Um, I don't know how much I love this transition up here and I may try to redesign that in the future but for right now let's just keep going. So here's my yellow Cheryl Mud tool rib and what I want to do is right now it comes down into that little narrow base and I want to bring it back out a little bit so that it's kind of a functional serving piece. So I'm going to come in the, the middle there and I'm going to press and stretch and try to make it still have that double wall effect but I want it to be more of a full curve down there in that bowl. Oh yeah, so much better so far. One of the ultimate potter's dilemmas is when do you quit? I always tell my students, when you're ahead. Kind of meaningless, you don't know when you're ahead until you're behind. Hmm. That's starting to look good. I'm definitely gonna have to pick up this camera and show you what the interior looks like. Um, I'm feeling it's definitely behaving, like the air is trapped. It doesn't seem like it wants to collapse. So that's all really good. Um, still not entirely certain about the way that looks. It definitely looks like somebody just put one bowl on top of another. Um, I haven't really figured a, a good way to finesse that transition. One way to do it would be to um, grab some really fine fishing line. I love this stuff, not for fishing, but for, for pottery, this um, braided Kevlar or whatever it is. Um, Spider wire is the, the name brand. So I can come in and just use my finger as, that, as a trimming tool again. But this time, instead of letting the, the wire run vertically, I'm gonna actually bring this part over the pot a little bit. So I bevel it back. I'm gonna come in until I'm touching the pot and then I'm just start the wheel up. Let's look what that looks like. Boy, could that be a more perfect trim? So it's got a funky little hard edge because obviously this thing was staying straight, it was under tension, but I think there's potential here for that to look really cool. So let's set that scrap clay aside and get this rib back out. And I just wanna compress that clay and then roll over the top of this thing. Taking my time to pick up the goobers as I go. So right now I'm working with it more vertical. Oh, we're getting there. All right, I've kind of 
worked over the rim one more time. And now we'll just do a final pass in the interior. I think that's gonna look super cool. So thanks for hanging in there with me through all the sort of changes of direction, hemming and hawing. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into my design process. I don't know if you can call it a design process if your goal is to rip off a pot you saw on MasterChef, but. Maybe it is. I'm realizing for this final pass, you know, it's always a good idea to get all of the gunk off your ribs. So I've got a sponge down here off, off screen and I'm just making sure this is really like out of the box clean. So I can kind of bend it around that edge. So that definitely is starting to have the, the feel of something that was hewn from stone, and at least in my estimation. And final trick is gonna to be to come over that top edge. I don't wanna leave that sharp. I wanted it crisp, but I don't want it sharp. And just take the chamois and just lightly, lightly soften that top edge. There we go. Of course, a little water dropped off my hand. Now, if you've hung on with me this long, uh, let's say one more thing, really, really important thing. We just made a bomb. If this goes in the kiln like this, this will absolutely blow up. I don't care how long you dry it. I don't care what anybody tells you. Um, if you've got an enclosed airspace like this, that's this big, it will blow up. Don't ask me how I know. I've never forgotten to put a hole in it too many times. Um, but they literally go to rubble in the kiln. So uh, it's really important to get a hole in there. And I will tell you, um, a needle tool hole is enough, but you have to make sure that the needle tool actually uh, keeps up. A hole that's closed and a lot of times if you do this when it's a little bit on the wet side it'll poke through there you've made a hole but as you pull the needle to excuse me the needle tool back out the hole kind of closes a flap down over it and the hole isn't there so i usually wait until it's fairly leather hard and i'll go back in a couple of times as it's drying and just make sure that hole is there uh, it's really fun if you let it get to leather hard when you poke the hole you'll hear it kind of hiss as it lets some of the compressed air from the pot shrinking come out and that's a good sign uh, but then go back after you hear the hiss and just go back through it a, a couple more times and make sure that that hole stays open if you really want to be safe put a couple holes in they can be in the very bottom um, just don't poke them up into the inner wall um, and i don't think you're ever going to have any trouble you could also for a pot like this you could hide a hole in this textured surface and for the glaze firing it doesn't matter if that hole gets clogged up so it's just for the bisque firing when the clay is trying to release its chemical moisture, um, that you have to be sure there's an air escape hole. Um, beyond that, glaze it and it'll be cool. So got my hands clean. I'm gonna pick up the phone, try not to give you seasickness and give you the sort of bird's eye view of this. All right. So that's the pot. 
You can see that nice smooth interior, kind of softly symmetrical, not, it's like soft focus. It's not perfectly symmetrical. There's a little dance in there. And then the outside, it's got that cool texture. And then that rim looks so thick. And so your, your eye says, wow, that's the thickest bowl I've ever seen. Um, but then when you pick it up, it'll just feel like a double size bowl. It won't necessarily feel like something that's an inch and a half thick. So thanks for hanging in there with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you have any questions on it or comments, leave them in the comments below.